<laughs> oh, Teddy Atlas, the man. Right there. Ryan the myth, Garcia. The legend. He needs no introduction. <laughs> That's dope. All right, you guys ready? Yeah, definitely. I'm super excited. Welcome to the fight with Teddy Atlas. I'm Ken Rideout, joined as always by the legend Teddy Atlas. And today's special guest, with the exception of Rob Moore, probably the most handsome guy we've ever had on the show, <laughs> the King Ryan Garcia. What's Let's up, champ? It. Welcome to the show. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Hey, Ryan, you look great. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Just chilling, you know, getting through this quarantine and preparing for my next fight. Hey guys, before we jump into things with Ryan, just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Athletic Greens. Today's program is brought to you by Athletic Greens, the all-in-one daily drink to support better health and peak performance. Even with a balanced diet, it's difficult to cover all your nutritional bases. That's where Athletic Greens will help. Their daily drink is like a nutritional insurance for your body that's delivered straight to your door. And guys, if you've listened to the show before, you know that I love this product. I take it with me when I travel. I just came back from a two-week vacation in New York. And, you know, when you're traveling, my diet, well, when I'm traveling, my diet tends to go down the tubes a little bit. And one thing that I like to do is at, at the very, at a very minimum is make sure I'm hitting all my vitamins, uh, probiotics, prebiotics. I think this stuff is very important, especially during these COVID times where an, a compromised immune system can leave you very vulnerable. Um, Athletic Greens is offering a special, uh, providing a special offer for us. Use the promo code Atlas. So go to athleticgreens.com slash Atlas, and they'll send you, in addition to your, with your order, they'll send you a one-year supply of high-quality vitamin D slash K2. The importance there is that the K2 helps the vitamin D absorption and although you get plenty of vitamin D being outside for instance I'm outside two or three hours a day on average exercising but even with that my vitamin D is very low when I've done blood tests so it's important that you supplement with vitamin D to maintain a strong healthy immune system so whether you're looking what so whether you're looking to boost your uh immune system or your energy levels, your gut health, now's the perfect time to try Athletic Greens for yourself. Simply visit athleticgreens.com slash atlas to claim the special offer today and receive free year supply of vitamin D3 slash K2. Um, incredible value. It's a one-year supply. You'll be hard-pressed to find a more comprehensive nutritional bundle anywhere else. Again, athleticgreens.com slash atlas. Give them a shot. One more thing, guys. Check out mybookie.com. AG, use the promo code ATLAS for up to 50% uh, credit on your first deposit. In the interview with Ryan, we talk about um, the Roy Jones Mike Tyson fight as well as Jake Paul versus Nate Robinson. He gives his picks for the fight. Uh, if you'd like to take advantage of some of that insight, again, go to my bookie, check them out, mybookie.ag, use the promo code ATLAS, A T L A S, for up to 50% credit on your first deposit. How do you prepare, you know, with this? with such crazy circumstances, you know, especially going back three, four months, everything is shut down, stuff's starting to open up a little bit now. Yeah. But tell us, tell the fans, I'm sure they're interested, you know, how have you uh, changed your training? How have you figured out a way to stay in shape when you had to back then and even now? What are you doing? Right. Uh, I think I just, you know, trying to get creative, thinking outside the box. Um, of course, still running every day. And uh, just being in the gym, you know, I'm blessed to have a gym. I'm blessed to uh, to be able to go to a uh, facility to train in, you know, by myself. So uh, I've just been keeping up date to with my skills, you know, trying to learn from uh, different fighters, trying to learn even from you. I think I even called you. <laughs> and uh, You forgot? Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean you think? You don't remember? <laughs> no, I do. I just Come didn't on. know. You don't get hit. You don't get hit. So please don't even I scam me. No, no, I just thought, like, was it before quarantine I called you or after? I, at this point, I've lost count of days. I don't know how long I've been in the house. <laughs> well, I, um, I hope it was – I hope you remember what we talked about at least. Oh, yeah, um, going through the – going through uh, different doors, <laughs> exiting out of the, you know, side angles, different dimensions. I know. I remember all that. Don't worry. Yeah. I have a good memory on boxing. <laughs> Who's when you're doing all this? Who's working with you? Your dad while you're doing this private? Um, yeah, I t I tell my yeah I tell my tell my dad a little things here and there, but really I'm just working it in my mind, 
on how I could deliver, you know, different punches and, you know, where they could land. So I'm, I'm pretty much just thinking of myself because at the end of the day, I mean, all you got is yourself in the ring. Yeah, that's true. I mean, when we talked, I talked about, as you just said, adding a couple of dimensions because I see you as a, you know, in and out, straight up guy, real good counter puncher, control the outside, but you can, you can do other things too. You can go inside when you have to, but for the most part, if you're looking at the optimal uh, Ryan Garcia with the gifts that you've been blessed with, you know, the physical attributes, I would say on the outside, control on the outside, go from there. And so we talked about those other dimensions, uh, mm -hmm. getting to the side, uh, adding, adding some things to yourself. Have you worked on that? Oh, yeah, I've been working on that, uh, finding shots from, like you said, from the size, different dimensions, and, you know, just trying to add that to my game because I understand that, you know, a lot of people are going to try to make me do things I'm uncomfortable with, uh, trying to fight in the inside, try to rough me up, so I'm trying to find different ways to catch them coming in. You're going to be one of those fighters where uh, your hair doesn't get ruffled. Your hair looks very mm -hmm. nice. Man, uh, I'm trying to keep it together, man. Shoot. <laughs> My dad is going bald. I'm getting scared. I'm like, Dad, don't pass that gene to me. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good right now. Hey, Ryan, how do you, how, how, to, to Teddy's point, how do you stay focused on improving when you get in there against, in your last fight against, was it Fonseca? Yeah. Fonseca, and you just knocked him out in what, the first round with that quick left hook. I was at that fight, by the way, and um, uh, it nice. was unbelievable to see a 21-year-old guy just getting started like yourself, sell out the Honda Center or Honda Arena, whatever it's called, in Anaheim. It was an unbelievable electric crowd. Could you sense the crowd? Man, I sensed the whole moment. You know, that, that day was something that, you know, it felt just so spiritual yet so uh, so meant to be. Like, it was destined. You know, it was just right on my path. And I felt like, you know, nothing that day, you know, could disturb me and nothing in that ring could disrupt me. And I just had a sense of just knowing of everything that was going to happen. So, you know, before the fight, I was praying to God and saying, you know, just have this man wake up because I know what we're about to do today. And it happened. And then, you know, I started praying for him right away, right when he went down. But um, yeah, it was just a surreal moment. I had a lot of momentum going. Uh, I was in my zone, you know, training. I felt like I was finally coming into my strength, you know, all those other fights I had, I didn't feel like that physical strength yet. You know, I just felt like I had really good punches. I know when I land a punch, you know, it could be a, a trouble for some guys. But this fight, I felt very physically strong finally and just ready, you know, for everything. You know, you're, you're only 22 years old. And I think I talked to you about this, that you're at that stage where you're just beginning to get, I use this term because it's used in boxing a lot, just to get to the point. But you're just starting to get that man strength where, you know, your your body's maturing a little bit more. Uh, do you feel that? And have you been doing anything to supplement that, to, to make that happen a little faster? Yeah, you know, I actually do uh, feel myself getting a little stronger. I feel, you know, a little bit more of a base. You know, for me, I was always a lengthy fighter and just, you know, could crack. But now I'm feeling a little bit more, you know, strength in, in myself due, due to only, I mean, due to strength and conditioning and I think just me growing up. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm trying everything, you know, I'm trying to build my legs. My legs are, they always look skinny, man. And no matter what I do, they look skinny. And I'm like, this is irritating me now. I have to do more squats or something. I mean, Hearns had skinny legs. He did pretty good. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but you, yeah, squats, Listen, I'll, I'll give you a quick uh, thought on my part. You want to hear it? Yeah, yeah, please. Do, do some hiking. It's a natural way to get your legs thicker mm. and stronger. There it is. like that. I like that. That's how she could free my mind up, too. My mind races a lot, so I think that'll help me, too. No, it it kill two birds with one stone. It'll take you to beautiful places where your mind, you know, can can do what it needs to do and be free and uh, have a chance to grow. So, Heck yeah. um, you know, when are you, tell us what the fans want to know this. We want to know, everyone wants to know. I know you're supposed to figure it out by the end of this month. What's going on with the big Lou Campbell fight? Oh yeah. I mean, that fight is uh, pretty much a done deal. Just a little bit of minor details. Um, 
and then we have that fight, you know, to uh, going on in uh, early October. Uh, and I'm looking, you know, finally to pick up where I left off and just to to submit myself at the top of the lightweight division that is really stacked. So uh, this fight will show everybody that, you know, I could get in there because, uh, you know, I know that I've only showed a little bit elements of my game. But this time I finally I think I think I don't know. I think I get to finally show what I'm really made of. You well with Campbell, you know, to a certain extent, you'd be looking in the mirror a little bit. Mm -hmm. To all wiry guy, you know, he likes to control range and distance. I think you have more options uh, that you can do, even though we were just talking about adding options. But you know, he's the kind of guy that historically, you come in four inches, he goes back six, and yeah. you know, he's he's looking looking at counter. But in the Lomachenko fight, uh, he engaged Lomo more. You know, mm -hmm. he, he did a little, I don't know if it's because he was in front of that great crowd in London where they get great crowds over there, you know, or if it's his last hurrah to a certain extent, or if it was just down the stretch where he knew he was behind and right. he had to do it. But you see that dimension in him where he fought a little bit more? I did. Um, there, there is some, there is a main weakness I see him in him that I, I might not just, I might not say, but uh but I have something planned for him. Just if he if he does decide to fight, which I really, really doubt he does. When he does feel these punches, I really doubt it because I am going to be able to hit him. I've seen him fight. Um, he goes back a lot. And then if if he has nothing to counter, he just covers up and lets somebody throw a punch or two. And uh, I don't think that would be too good for him. But we'll see what he does. Uh, I know that my fight will predominantly not be on the outside but just because, I mean, I feel like I'm the bigger puncher and I feel like I could take it to him and his punches are not, you know, something that I'm too worried about. I've watched him fight um, his knockouts. I've done my research on his knockouts are against guys that have been knocked out many times. And, you know, he keeps lying to the media saying that he's going to knock me out. Uh, Luke can't keep lying to himself. You know what I mean? You, you lie to yourself. You're going to end up running into a wall. You know, he's a southpaw. He's, uh, he won the gold medal in the Olympics yeah. in London. I was there. I called those Olympics for NBC. Uh, yeah, so he might have maybe got a little home cooking. I'm not sure. But listen, he's an Olympic gold medalist. Uh, he's fought for the world title twice. He's definitely a step up for you uh, yeah, in, in experience. Uh, you're, so, you're a smart guy. And I'm not saying this to you because we're doing this, but obviously that's part of your success. You're, you're very good intellectually and you have good instincts and your father's doing a good job and he's raising a good son, by the way. Um, Thank you. So, but he, you know, it's, uh, it's the kind of fight where you're stepping up in class, uh, but mostly in experience. When I say class, I'm going to differentiate with you. You probably have the advantage of talent, so so you got to be careful when you say that. Oh, Ryan Garcia stepping up in class, but maybe not because maybe his class is already higher because mm -hmm. he's got more talent. But you are definitely stepping up in experience. Yes, I there's definitely. No yeah, yeah. There's no doubt about that. This fight, uh, like you said, I'm fighting the Olympic champion. He's fought for two world titles. Um, it's going to be a fight where. You know, I actually have really satisfaction fighting this fight because one of my dreams was to go to the Olympics and become a gold medalist. And, you know, uh, my story goes, I was 17. I made, the, uh, I made the team, but they changed the age requirements to 19 because of the headgear, uh, taking off the headgear. So I, had, I was forced to go pro because, you know, my family, we all needed money. And I decided to take that route. So... Uh, I, this is going to be a great fight for me. I'm very excited. I'm I'm ready for a grinder. If it's a hard fight, I'm ready for it. You know, to dig deep and get in there, and you know, like I said, I'm ready to take some shit if he has it, and I'm ready to go in there and get my my win, no matter what. Like you said, find a way. Do we know where the fight's going to be? It will be in the U.S. That's confirmed, but we don't know exactly where. That's that's. But it will be in the U.S. All right. That's a, yeah. I mean, he does fight off some of that steam from his fans. So yeah. that's not a bad thing, um, mm -mm. you know, because he does have a good follow on a lot of these United Kingdom fighters. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do. They have yeah. good followers. I don't know why. They, those fans are crazy. <laughs> well, that's one thing about this quarantine is no one's getting any boost from the fans these days. 
it's just yeah. you and him in the ring and you, all you can hear is the fighters and the trainers and um I think you deserve a lot of credit for this one because this is a fight probably a, maybe one or two steps up that you didn't have to rush in to take, but I'd say this is a major coming out party. You beat this guy and look good doing it, the sky's the limit. I mean, now you're talking about matchups with all the top guys, including Lomachenko, who to, who went the distance with Luke. So I'm curious to see how this one goes. We uh, will obviously be pulling for you. Yeah, I mean, look at it, you know. Um from the prospects that really talk down on me and I see all of it, you know what I mean? I see what people say about me. Um, but I'm, I'm ta- I think I'm walking the walk instead of talking the talk. You know what I mean? I, I've st- I'm stepping up pretty big. Uh, and these prospects, you know, they've talked all this, you know, shit about me and trying to bring down my name, trying to discredit my skills. But uh, this night, I think this night, I will finally get to show everybody that I'm here to stay for the long run. You know what I mean? The thing I'm interested with this fight, there's one wrinkle to this fight that I find interesting. Um, To me, you have a lot of good assets because you you are smart, you have good instincts, you have good innate intelligence. Uh, I think you have the ability to make it up as you go if you have to. I think that's what special fighters have. Uh, I also think that we don't know yet, but my feeling is that, and don't make me wrong, please, mm-hmm. but my feeling is that when that, that you have the lantern, a lot of fans now listening, they're going to say, what the heck does Teddy mean? You got the lantern. I think that when that day comes, and it comes for everybody, when you got to go into that dark place that you haven't been before, I mm, think I you got have the, the chills. Lantern. Yeah, Oof, I well, got the chills on that one. I know I'm gonna have to be ready for that. You I, know, I, you have to, yeah. it's always there. It's always there, waiting for all fighters. Uh, it's just a matter of when. And when that day comes, you need to be able to have that lantern to light up that dark place. And I believe you have that. And yeah. so, having said that, for me, the trickiest thing for this fight is the guys in Southpaw. And I don't make too much of it, but I know that. You probably know exactly what I'm talking about. And your best punch for me is tremendous. It's it's pretty special. It's a signature punch. Mm -hmm. Uh, All real good fighters have a signature punch usually. And yours is that kind of left hook. You, boy, oh, boy, (laughs) you you got it down. It's timing. For people out there that think it just happens, no. You make it happen. Yeah. yeah, it's timing. And it means being calm. There's so many things to go with yes. that. Yeah, It means right. being calm, yeah. to be able to time somebody yeah. and see the picture, see more of the picture, and yeah. see it in 3D. Yeah, the more calm, the more you see it. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So you got this kind of love talk. Now, a lot of times you get guys to bite. You get guys to cooperate. You, you got to get them ready, you know. Sugar Ray Robinson, the great Sugar Ray Robinson, some people think he was the greatest fighter of all time, used to say, I got to dress him up before I get him drunk. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. You know, it's crazy. I watched him all before that Fonseca fight. And, you know, I was like, man, that perfect left hook was amazing. How did he do it? And I kept watching it. I'm like, oh, he just hit him to the right hook to the body a couple few times. Then he just turned his uh, hip and then just left let, let that left hook go. I was like, I'm going to try to do something like that. And then when I landed my hook, I was like, man, that was pretty close up there. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too, I should have been commentating because I would have gave you credit for that. I would have said, hey, you know who that resembles a little bit? <laughs> they don't know history anymore, man. They don't care yeah, about well, it. <laughs> sometimes they don't. When you threw that left hook, that crowd was so full, so uh, packed in there. I think I was out the door before he hit the canvas. I was sitting with Steve Kim at ringside. You threw that hook. He went down. I was like, later, Steve. And I was sprinting out of there trying to beat the crowd to drive back oh to uh, to back drive back home. <laughs> that 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 crowd was nuts, though. They went crazy. I mean, that was like one of my favorite crowds I've felt like ever. It was it was amazing. You know, Ryan. Part of the setup, you might get a guy to reach in with the right hand just a little yeah. bit, get him to cooperate, and then bang, there's a yeah. little space, you fill that space. But here's the difference. You're not going to have a guy throwing that right hand like that. This guy's yeah. a southpaw. That punch is going to be a different punch now in a different position. It's going to be a jab, a lead jab. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so how are you going to deal with that? Because it is different. Uh, I'm going to, you know, 
like my saying is, I'm gonna put pressure on the pipes till they burst. So ooh, ooh. that's my that's my. You're strategy. gonna make it happen. You're gonna. Make I'm gonna it happen. make it happen. So yeah. he's gonna have to be forced to throw something to get me off him. And right when he does in that moment, I'm gonna crack him, and uh, we'll see if he takes. If not, I'm grinding on him all night long. Yeah, because the difference with for the fans out there that you're going to be seen instead of the possibility of getting that power punch the right hand to reach and then you create that little hole that you mm -hmm. you know that you fill where the guy doesn't even see it now you got the right jab there where guys don't usually reach in or lunge with a jab so mm -hmm. now you got to time that jab mm -hmm. now, now, exactly uh, he's smiling okay we got it all right <laughs> i know hey, i know that punch all too well i, I love know. body south Pauls. But okay. I also got to be, you know, I, I think the main thing I have to be in this fight is calm because I know he's going to try to frustrate me with his movement and his little tactics because, you know, obviously he doesn't have the same type of talent as in speed and power is what I'm talking about. He does have good technique, though, but he doesn't yeah. have speed and power. So the main thing he's going to try to disrupt me with is his little tactics. So I have to just stay calm and stick to my game plan, to my to my guns, and I think I will, I, I know I would definitely pull out this victory. I'll leave you with one other thing. He's got experience, so yeah. this is the way I'd leave you with it. Don't let him lie to you. Right. Yeah, act like he's not hurt or something. Don't let him lie. <laughs> exactly. I know. <laughs> okay. Thank you for that one, Teddy. I'm going to bring that one in the ring, too. Yeah. Well, you're, you're going to bring all of it in the ring. I'm going to step back a couple of minutes ago. You mentioned, and Ken brought up a great point about that Fonseca fight with the great, great, you know, feeling there as far as the audience. Next time you get in the ring, there's going to be no audience. How's that going to affect you? You know, uh, I think, uh, I don't know yet. I mean, honestly, I, I don't know how it's going to affect me. I'm not going to lie and say that, uh, oh, I'm going to just... Do this, do that, because at the end of the day, I love the crowd. You know, I, love I know the, you too. I know I love you too. The people, you know, I thrive off it. So um, yes, you too. I think this will be this will yeah, this will all be a um, mental preparation before the fight. And I'm starting like right now, like in training camp. You know, just to prepare mentally on what I'm going to be. You know, how I'm going to be, and how do I how do I handle you know not having nobody in there. So I'm definitely going through that in my mind right now. And just keep on pushing forward, no matter what. Push forward, you know, no matter what situation. You know, you're not gonna have somebody scream, yeah, when you hit them. So you gotta just, you know, prepare my mind. That's what I'm doing right now. So you said exactly the right thing. I'm not surprised because the reason I posed that question to you, it doesn't matter for some fighters, but for you it does because you do feel that energy. You yeah. do feed off it. I've noticed that about you. Yeah. So that's why. That is something that you can't take for granted. You have to prepare your mind going in that that's not there. Yeah, some people, like I said, the worst thing you could do is lie to yourself. And that's what I'm not going to do. I wasn't going to lie to you right now and say, oh, I'm perfectly fine. Like, I don't care about no crowd. I'm a fighter. I could have said that. But I'm like, wait, if I lie to myself right now, I won't prepare. So I'm going to prepare. And I'm like, all right, I got to be ready for this. You know, I got to be ready for nobody screaming and <laughs> none of that. You know. I got to create my own momentum. That's yes, you too. Yeah. Ken, you go ahead, Ken. As you're preparing now, are you in um, Are you in camp with your buddy Canelo, or, uh, and are you training with the Reynosos, or is it yeah. just with your dad? Yeah, they'll be coming in next week. Um, right now, they're in Mexico, but uh, they'll be coming in next week. Right now, I'm just training in my gym and, you know, with my dad, and we're just working, you know, just – just drills, keeping sharp until, you know, my coach comes and we start, you know, really going all in. Prior to the pandemic, how have you enjoyed um, be it spending time with Canelo? And I'm, I'm sure you're like gaining a lot of uh, intel from his experience. I mean, he's easily the biggest draw in the sport. Talk yeah, to me about that relationship and what you've been able to learn from Canelo. Well, I mean, no better example than to have the pound for pound champion best in the world to, you know, talk to you. And he gives me advice here and here about, you know, issues I'm going through outside boxing and, you know, things that will help me get through it because, you know, as a young fighter right now, I'm seeing everything and I'm experiencing everything for the first time. And I'm like, all right, this frustrates me. This doesn't frustrate me. And then it's just good to have somebody that's been through it all to tell me, Ryan, just stay calm. Things will be okay. You got to do this, do that. This is the best decision to go. And, you know, 
uh, I'm very grateful, very grateful to have a, a guy like that mentoring me. You know, and similarities, he started very young, 16, you started 17. So it's great to have a guy that can understand where, you know, where you're traveling from. Exactly. You know, um, he was, yeah, like you said, he started at 15 that's, or 16. He's crazy. Yeah, that's insane. I mean, I, I, I mean, kudos to him. You see how far Canelo has came. Uh, I remember watching him when he was younger. He's probably going to get mad at me for saying this. But I was like, man, you're no way you could hang with me when you were younger. You, you were slow. <laughs> but, uh, man, the way that he's gotten so much better is just crazy. Like, I literally – how do you respond to that? Oh, he was like, man, I would have whooped your ass. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would have went to the body and took yeah. away some of that speed. <laughs> yeah. He was like, I was too big. I was naturally bigger than you. I'm like, all right, man, we'll see. You're kind of following in his footsteps by moving up and taking these big fights like the Campbell fight. Yeah, definitely. Canelo was in there with everyone at a young age. I think he fought, uh, what did he fight Mayweather at 15? <laughs> if I'm like at 22, I think my yeah. age, that's yep. freaking insane, man. Um, crazy. Crazy. Uh, Brian, talking about relationships, how's your, you know, relationship with your promoter, the lawyer? Uh, man, I really can't. I mean, should I say anything? I, I think it's been Oh, going, nothing, nothing. Listen, uh, we we'll, uh, would never do that to you. But yeah. I know that I would be wrong as a professional not to ask it. Yeah, so, definitely. So, um, please, whatever is is comfortable and right for you. Yeah, uh, it's going as good as it's going. You know what I mean? Um, we're trying to work through little things that we have a little bit of differences, and I think that's fine. Uh, yeah. I think in anything in life, it is not going to be a straight road. Nothing's a straight error, and if it is, something's wrong. So, um, so we're just getting through little things, but. Uh, but it's it's going good now. Now that we got this fight going on, and uh, I'm happy that you know I'm happy I made the decisions I made because now I'm getting a fight that I really wanted, and uh, I'm getting to fight somebody that is gonna give me some credit. You know what I mean? I, I've been hearing it too long, and people have been on me about this and that, and you know I fought for this. I fought to get a good fight, and now I got it, and now it's my chance to prove everybody why I should have got it. Let me. Can I give you a little bit of advice? Yeah. All right. I don't know. Talk about instincts. A trainer has to have instincts too. <laughs> yeah. And my instincts tell me the way you've talked um, about grinding and everything else in your mind. I, I think you're in the right place, definitely. And you have nothing but good people around you to make sure of that. But it reminds me a tiny bit and just some, I wouldn't say this to someone else because it might make them cuckoo in the head. And the 75% of this is mental. But I'm going to give it to a guy who I feel can handle it and maybe should hear it because he can handle it. Mm -hmm. Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, the first time. I see similarities. The golden boy, good looking guy, he had a seven up commercial. You know, oh, yeah, you no, no, no fighters had that. No fighters had that. Man, and they still haven't got that, man. Damn. They still, maybe you'll get it. Uh, and then he, a lot of people, we saw the talent. We see the talent with you. A lot of people were knocking him. Oh, you know, he's a gold boy. He's talented. He, he won a gold medal. He, he got paid a lot of money right away. And yeah, but is he a fighter? And Leonard felt that. He might not have talked about it. And what did he do? He went in went a fight to with Duran, and he probably shouldn't have fought that way. He probably should have mixed it a little, but he didn't. Now, what happened? He lost a fight. He actually got more respect than he ever had before that because now people were like, he's not just a pretty boy. He's a guy that fights. We feel comfortable with him. We can trust him. He can be one of us. He, you know, he, he proved that he's a fighter. Is some of that going on in your head? That's it. Man, you really hit the nail on the head. I, I, I feel like I have not like you said, I, it's like it's like kind of a chip on my shoulder. And I've been like feeling that and I've been taking it in the ring every time. And I want to be in that, you know, that's why when I go in there, I'm like, all right, like I want to feel him throw some punches at me. And then but then I catch him and he's knocked out. I'm like, what the I want somebody. I, I'm like, all right, somebody's going to 
hit me through the grind or something. I know, like you said, that lantern is going to need to be, you know, lit. And I'm going to have to go through that. And I'm waiting for that day. And sometimes I, I, I go in the ring and I tell my dad, my dad thinks I'm crazy. I said, I want him to hit me with something. Like, let him touch me in the face. Like, I, he was like, what are you talking about? I was like, yeah, I want to feel what he has. And he was like, man, like, are you crazy? Box the way you box and do what you do and land the punches and, you know, don't care what anybody thinks. But for some reason, it's like a chip on my shoulder. And then I hear people, you know, um, that are should be on my side say things about me as well. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard went through that and it affected him. And he fought the wrong fight. He fought the right fight. He, he, he won the people. <laughs> and, he, and then after that, he went, he probably beat Tommy Hearns because of that fight. Because of yeah. the experience that he used in that fight, that he wouldn't have beat him if he didn't have that fight. But use everything, Ryan. You're yeah. that kind of kid. Use everything. Grab everything that's around you. Yeah. Use what we just talked about. Use that experience, that knowledge. That's you understand true. what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. Don't get blinded by everything else. Just remember everything. That's true. Yeah. Damn, Teddy. You don't have you to... Were... You hit me with facts. No, you hit me with facts all the time. Every time I'm like, find a way. I'm like, dang, I'm taking gems. Every time I talk to you, I'm like, all right, I'm going to take this because I really use it. That's the crazy thing. A lot of my stuff is mental. So when you say something, I'm like, all right, I need to use that. Cause I'm like, all right, that's going to help me go through some other obstacle that I'm going to probably run into because I always run into something. So I'm like, all right. Like, I know that you probably think, oh, this kid is just agreeing. But it's like, no, it's like, I really... I really think of these things and I go through things and I'm like, all right, I have to, I need some type of uh, tip or, or knowledge. And then when I get it, I'm like, oh, this is perfect for this situation. So thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. One of the things I've noticed about Teddy just mentioned with um, Sugar Ray Leonard in the uh, Sprite commercial, but I noticed on your Instagram, which by the way, has a few followers. You're a few ahead of us, but not much. Um, <laughs> I think you got seven million followers there, and I noticed you got a uh, Bud Light commercial up there. So you've had you have yeah. some like unbelievable sponsors. But who are the, some of the other sponsors you're working with? Let's give them a free plug on the best boxing show in the world. Yeah, you know I'm working with Gymshark, one of the biggest uh, fitness uh, fitness brands on on online retail. Um, I'm working with man, a tons of people. I, I I would have to look at it again. You know Budweiser. Um, a lot of other people, I just can't think of it at the moment, but I have a lot of uh, sponsors outside of boxing that I've been working with. And um, I'm also with uh, uh, WME, William Morris. William Morris Endeavor, yep. Yeah. Good for you, Endeavor, man. Endeavor, yeah. Then I'm also with IMG Models. So I've done a couple of catalogs and not catalogs, magazines. So, you know, I, I'm building my portfolio on that as well, but definitely not my main focus. I actually, you know what I got mad at? Some guy, when this other fighter was fighting, um, I think last week, uh, the commentators, they go and say, oh, Ryan is just a, a underwear model. I'm like, wow, are they, really talk <laughs> are they really talking shit about me? And it's not even my fight. Like, it's not even my fight. It has nothing to do with me. And then they make a comment about me. And I'm like, man, this is unbelievable. I, I can't believe this. <laughs> that jealousy is a powerful emotion. Man. It worked out pretty well for Mark Wahlberg, so don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, Mark Wahlberg, yeah, that's true. Your team has done a great job because I have seen some of the stuff you've done outside of the ring, and it's that's you know that's important. You're going to have a life after boxing, and it's important to have that mainstream exposure that you've been getting. So congratulations to you and your people. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, I mean, I've done what the Abercrombie and Fitch campaign of – Teen Vogue. I've done so many crazy things in my short career. I'm like, man, you guys, if you guys had the opportunity, you guys would do it too. So don't of, lie. Of yeah. course they would. Yeah. Talk to me about that Instagram following. Like, how did you build it up? Was it a conscious decision or did it just kind of happen organically? And one day you were like, oh my God, I have a lot of followers. Or, or was it from the beginning you guys had that plan of like, let's build a social media presence? No, it was kind of destined, you know, like I'll tell the story from the beginning, you know what I mean? So I've always grown up uh, around social media. That's, that's just my generation. And um, I've always been, uh, I guess, uh, wowed by the fact that somebody could have that many followers. I'm like, ah, there's no way. How, how could that even be possible? So, you know, as a kid, I just, you know, would post things that I thought were, you know, entertaining and 
Hey guys, look like looks like we lost Ryan there having some phone problems. While we get him back up, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Athletic Greens. Check them out at athleticgreens.com. Use the promo code ATLAS, so it's athleticgreens.com slash ATLAS. They'll send you a free one-year supply of vitamin D, high-quality vitamin D, in addition to their um, supplement. Um, again, can't say enough good things about these guys. Very important during these COVID times that you maintain a healthy immune system. Use Athletic Greens to get your, uh, consider it like health insurance for your uh, body. Make sure you mean to get getting all your appropriate uh, vitamins and minerals. Once again, check them out at athleticgreens.com slash Atlas, A-T-L-A-S, for a year supply of vitamin D. Additionally, check out at my bookie. Check them out at mybookie.ag. Use the promo code Atlas, A-T-L-A-S, for up to 50% credit on your first deposit. A um, lot of good fights coming up, a lot of uh, combat sports action, UFC putting out a ton of product, and um, take the opportunity to get some action in with my bookie. Check them out again at mybookie.ag, promo code ATLAS, A-T-L-A-S, for up to 50% credit on your first deposit. And uh, one more thing, uh, please go to cameo.com, check out Teddy Atlas. Teddy's putting up uh, Cameo videos there, getting a lot of positive feedback. Uh, if you'd like a personalized video message from Teddy, again, go to cameo.com, search Teddy Atlas, and um, give Teddy a shout, and I'm sure he'd be glad to send you a video message. Man, I was bad. <laughs> I was bad news <laughs> Why isn't it twisting? There we go. There you go. So let's jump back into it, right? So I asked you, how did you get your Instagram following started? How did that whole thing kick off? Yeah, you know, it's uh, like I said before, my phone died. Uh, it was kind of like, you know, the stars aligned. It was, uh, it was crazy. So I started, you know, as a young kid, just into social media and just wowed by the fact that people could have a lot of followers. So I would naturally just post stuff and just see people's reaction. So, you know, as I went pro, I was like, you know what, this might be a good way to show people my skills and entertain people on the internet. So I started posting just, you know, cool little mitt videos, but, you know, not a lot of people were following me. It was kind of like, uh, it was kind of like I had, a, you know, a little thing going on, maybe 5,000 views, but nothing, nothing crazy. But I thought that was a lot, you know, for, for my age and I thought it was cool. So the moment that I really blew up uh, was, uh, I was hitting this bag, like this Cobra bag that moves a lot. You've probably seen it on my uh, my Instagram. But it wasn't actually me posting it. Some guy told me, you know, we were at this random place, this random gym. And this guy said, hey, can you hit this for me? I like the way you hit it. And I was like, okay, I'll hit it for you. Not thinking anything of it. And I started hitting it, you know, doing my thing. And he posted it on his page. And his page had maybe, I don't know, 3,000 followers, not a lot. And... I mean, for some reason, when he posted it on his page, it went everywhere. Like, you know, from Facebook to Instagram to people just loved it for some reason. And I don't know what that reason is. Um, but uh, from there, you know, when I blew up on the Internet, I got up to like 100,000 followers. And, you know, as a young kid, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is crazy. Like I was, you know, ecstatic. I was already maybe like eight and oh as a pro so i was like man i got to jump on everybody like, that's what was in my mind but i also thought you know okay don't lose this momentum keep on making cool videos like that keep entertaining people because you know why not uh, so from there it was so crazy so right when i blew up on the internet i had my first fight on espn on live television like right after that so everybody you know in the comments oh but has he ever fought so now it's my chance to show everybody that I could fight. And it was perfectly aligned to this day. So, you know, first time on ESPN, you know, I'm fighting. I knock out the guy in 30 seconds. And then I end up on SportsCenter top 10. And then from there, I blow up even more and go up to like 200,000 followers. And then I keep on fighting on ESPN. And then I'm knocking all these dudes out in the first round. And it just goes crazy. And the videos keep on getting better. And, you know, I just never lost that drive of momentum. And, you know, it just kept on going. It never stopped. You know, this momentum that it created, it never stopped. And, you know, you know, the stars aligned, man. It, it was perfect. Like from one thing to the next to the next. I mean, it just kept on blowing up more and more. I think to put it in perspective for people, 7 million followers is like 2% of the people in the whole country. And 
And I was telling Teddy to put it in a pay-per-view perspective. I mean, the UFC just did like 1.3 or 1.4 million pay-per-view buys. And it was the biggest one since Conor McGregor fought last. Think about that in terms of your followers and how how much potential there is there for you in a pay-per-view bout. Should you get through Luke Campbell and face someone like a Vasily Lomachenko? The the, the, the potential is just massive. I uh, I don't think a lot of people realize that, how big that following is. I mean, if you, if you just look at this one post I did with me versus Luke Campbell, the one I just posted, I mean, there's no no other fighter can just post like his poster and get over 700,000 likes. I mean, there's just not one fighter right now that could do that. I'm promoting my fight by myself. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I'm making this fight huge just by my following. Uh, and it, it's just created by that fan base and just how many people are following to see what I'm doing next. So um, it's just a very beautiful thing in this generation that gives us the control, the boxers more control, in my opinion, if you do it right. Um, But these promoters don't want that. (laughs) Oscar, are you listening? (laughs) Are you listening, Oscar? I'm going to send him a text. You better listen to this (laughs) podcast, man. (laughs) Hey, speak Go ahead, go ahead, ahead. go ahead, Ken. I'm sorry. Speaking of social media, I see your friend. I think one of your friends, Jake Paul. Are you yeah. friends with him? Yeah, Jake Paul's yeah. going to fight Nate Robinson on the undercard of uh, Roy, Roy Jones and Mike Tyson. Talk to me about the Paul brothers because, I mean, I got to give those guys credit. Like, And, and yeah. Teddy could probably attest to this. It takes a lot of courage to get in the ring and to have your first fights in front of yeah. 10,000 people or whatever they're packing in those stadiums. Yeah. I mean... Listen, I'm not a huge fan of seeing amateurs fight, but I'll give that guy credit. Like, those guys actually show up and are decent fighters. So uh, yeah. talk to me about that fight and who do you like? Is he going to beat Nate Robinson or is the athleticism of Nate Robinson going to be too much? Uh, okay, so, I mean, I it's crazy. So the way I met the Pauls is Jake Paul noticed me when I had, like, 70,000 followers and I wasn't big. And, you know, he came over my house and he was like – he came to my house in Victorville, a very small town um in the middle of nowhere and he came and visited me and just said you know I think you're going to be doing something great you know and I did but he called it from a long time ago uh and then we just became like you know friends and he always loved boxing he wanted to get into it and I'm like oh it's a pretty serious sport you might want to take it very serious and you know I've seen him go from point a to now where he's at and it's like now he's fighting on these big stages and I'm like Okay, but I give him credit because he put in the work before. That's what Nate Robinson doesn't understand. This guy trains every day with a professional coach and spars professionals and sometimes gets his ass whooped, but not really. Like, he goes in there and does this thing. And I'm like, I don't know if Nate Robinson has ever taken boxing this serious as this guy. These guys, they're so, like, thinking outside the box. That's why I like them. You know, maybe, you know, they've done some crazy things. But when you're trying a lot of different things, you might mess up once or twice. But um, it's, it's just crazy how they could continue to continue to create new things and be creative. And um, I'm very excited. I think Jake's going to knock him out. Uh, and it's cool. I mean, it's just a fun overall card. You got Mike Tyson, Roy Jones Jr. And then you got the Paul brother. Like, this is crazy. It's just, you know, you know, we're in a quarantine when we need some entertainment like this. Who do you like in the Tyson Roy Jones fight? Man, I just, I don't know. I really don't know what to think about this. I have no like grasp. Like, this, I mean, I know Roy Jones Jr., he got knocked out a couple times his last couple fights. But I also know Mike also did too, and Mike didn't do that good either. I I don't know. I I can't say. Can you? I mean, I don't understand this. I don't have a prediction yet, but I'll tell you who, uh, where you can um, voice your opinion is on my bookie. Check them out, mybookie.ag. Use the promo code Atlas. <laughs> I love that. I love that little quick plug in. Let's Gotta go. do it. You know yeah. about pro- sponsors. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Not that we want to stay on that too long. Uh, it's it's a bit of a money grab, and there's nothing wrong with making money. Um, we're all trying to do that. But it's not really about the athleticism of Jones and Tyson at this point. You're Ryan, you're an honest guy. You just said it perfect. Uh, at the end of their careers, when they had careers, 
uh, they were getting knocked out. Yeah. And um, they already showed that they had passed that that place where they were, you know, prime fighters. So now at 51 and 54 years old, you're not getting that back. So now it's just about having an event, about entertainment. Right, All right. It's the latest Marvel comic uh, movie coming out, Spider-Man 5, you know, uh, the <laughs> Green Goblin, <laughs> uh, you know, the Sandman, the Iceman. The uh, Spider-Man you know, what, versus the Iceman. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Uh, whatever, you know, whatever the people want it to be, because that's what it's about, people being entertained, using their imagination for, for what they want it to be for them. But, uh, you know, it's not Godzilla. Uh, definitely not. And you think Mike has something left? No, you know what? When, that's what made this fight. Talking about social media, it, it's a perfect segue into this, what you talked about. You were so smart and brilliant with the social media. Tyson was pretty smart. He, he took a little clip of him, you know, hitting the pads. People forgot that there was nobody hitting back. You know, people <laughs> kind of forgot that. But yeah. it's okay. And they, oh, wow, he's got it. He's back. Look, you know, because he's hitting the pads and he's, you <laughs> forget that he's still, he's still got that DNA. He's still an athlete. He's still better than the average guy. Yeah, he's going to look good on pads. Yeah. yeah. He's still going to have that, you know, Fire. that ability that yeah. somebody else doesn't have. But that doesn't translate into doing it with a man uh, in a ring. But here's where it gets a little interesting for me. I tried to grab stuff that's real, that's tangible. Boy Jones was very good when he was good at doing things wrong and making them right. He broke all the rules. He was a little bit like Ali, not that anybody's like Ali, but he dropped his hands, he put them back. He did everything wrong, but he made it right because he had great reflexes and timing. Guess what? He doesn't have that anymore. And Tyson, even though he's three years older, he has one fallback, being the natural bigger guy, number one, True. being that he's got great power, power's the last thing to leave. George Foreman proved that. And he had technique. He had the technique, the peekable, where that's right, where he make yeah. you miss and then he make you pay. That technique, even with age, even with time, that True. does not get eroded. That's still there. He's got that big advantage of technique where Roy doesn't have that. He doesn't have the technique to fall back on at 51 years old. That's true. That's very true. So yeah. if Tyson goes in there with any intention, any real intention, see, that's the problem. Yeah. That's the problem. That's the million-dollar question because when – when he was last around, he lost to Kevin McBride, and he basically sat down and quit. So he didn't want to fight. So if he can, for a couple minutes, want to fight, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. People are going to say, Teddy, is that what you? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If he could want to take a chance, if he could want to put himself out there for a few minutes, with everything I just said, he probably has a good chance to win by knockout. That's very true. I think that I think that I think you're right when saying that Mike Tyson does is naturally the bigger guy, and he had that technique that was better than Roy's because Roy, when he lost his speed, I mean everything else went out the door, and his reflexes. So I think that it, like you said, if Tyson comes in there with actual mentality to really go at it and get this, you know this knockout he's gonna get it in my opinion because uh roy jones jr was getting knocked out pretty bad in his last couple of fights but he was a great fighter when he was in his prime but um yeah like you said i think he's just too big if there is a winner uh you got me swaying to tyson but uh, then again they're both 57 and 50 i don't know how they are so they might just get tired 51. they might just get tired man <laughs> well together they're 100 <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you, Ryan, we we talked you you mentioned earlier that you're always looking at film. You're always trying to pick up something. What are the fighters? I'm sure the fans out there would love to know who are the fighters that you look at? Hmm. There's a I mean, I like to look at every single fighter, but mainly the ones that I think fit my style the best. 
which I feel comfortable in fighting like. Um, Sugar Ray Robinson, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. Um, I like how they mix both, you know, long range, but then they could also get in there and throw those combinations and damage you. Um, believe it or not, I also like uh, Rocky, uh, was it Rocky Marciano or? Uh, I think Marci- Rocky- Marciano was the heavyweight champ. Graziano yeah, was the okay. middleweight. Yeah, yeah, Marciano. Uh, I like how he creeped in on you and, and let that right hand go in. I've always wanted to do a move like that, get low. And because I know what timing he's looking for, so I think I, I can find that shot. I've been practicing that shot a lot. Um, I also like Manny Pacquiao, believe it or not. Uh, I just like how he, um, no matter, I know it looks a little sloppy at times, but it's just the rhythm in what he's doing it at, and that, that offsets the opponent. So it might not look as clean, but he is doing a lot of little things to make those shots land. And I love that about him. Um, I mean, I've looked at Muhammad Ali. He has um, what do you call unbelievable rhythm. So when he bounces, it's just rhythm. He's doing everything about feeling. You know, he feels the ring. He feels the opponent wanting to throw a punch. He's just flowing with it. You know, Muhammad Ali was a – He, I love how he fought. But like you said, he didn't have like technique, like – crazy technique you know he didn't keep his hands up but the thing I love about him is something I kind of experienced you know in the ring I'm talking about not our style but just in the ring when you feel the opponent you know you feel him coming at you at the wrong moment you just know you're gonna land a punch you shouldn't have thrown that man your rhythm was off mine's on point right now you're about to get hit so you know I've looked at everybody I, I really pay attention to people's rhythm because that doesn't lie you know what I mean a lot of, you know, they got good technique, but let's see their rhythm. You know, you could have the best technique in the world, but if you don't got that rhythm and timing, I don't think you have anything, to be honest. No, you, you're right. Let me test you, see if you remember what we talked about. What's the best punch you can throw sometimes? The best punch I could, oh, did you don't throw a punch? You were let's listening. Go. Come on now. You were listening. <laughs> let's go now. There we yeah. go. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, you were listening. Best, yeah, the best punch is the one that wasn't thrown. <laughs> yeah. exactly. exactly right. A lot better than throwing it at the wrong time. Yeah. Hey, you almost had me saying a jab for a second, but I was like, no, nah, that wasn't it. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Because the jab could be the wrong punch. You that could throw true. it at the wrong place. The wrong rhythm, the wrong time. You shouldn't have thrown it at that moment, man. Now that right hand's coming right over the top. <laughs> yeah. My man. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes sir listen we talked earlier there's a lot of you, you got the the only business that matters now and i'm sure well you know it and your father knows it and your trainer who's tremendous right now so they all know it but the only fight that matters is campbell right now that's business right. that, that's what you got to take care of you mm-hmm. get past that the, there are a lot of good fights out there there are that you're you're in a loaded division kid you know that I mean, uh, you could, if you want, you could also move up to Junior Welton for the money fights. You got jo- Josh Taylor, you yeah. know, you, you got Ramirez. I mean, yeah. you're talking about big money fights and you're talking about a long body where, let me ask you, can you go up? You've already been up two weight classes. Do you foresee yourself being able to go up another? Is that part of your future? Yeah, that definitely is part of my future. Um, I think what age I'm growing into my body. And I think my prime is at 147, 140. That's my wow. going to be my, my prime right now is just, you know, I, I'm, I want this 135 out just because it's just stacked in a great division. This will, you know, this will fulfill a part of me. You know what I mean? I feel like the 130 didn't. That's why I didn't go for the title. I'm like, you know what? 35 got everybody in there. And I, even in the amateurs, you know, I never shied away from the hardest weight class. I always wanted to be in the toughest division because if I'm going to be the best, I better be the best in the best division. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think 35 is one of the best divisions in the sport of boxing right now. I mean, oh, yeah. you, you got Tank Davis, you got Devin Haney, up and coming. you got Tefima Lopez, Lomachenko, myself. You got so many great fighters in this yes, weight sir. class that, if I mean, whoever is at the top, whoever gets through everybody, I mean – has a very strong suit as being pound for pound just because on the talent wise, if you're talking talent, so much talent in this division, you know, with speed, power, athleticism, young, prime, you know, everything. And you got the, 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 the head honcho at the top, Lomachenko. I think everybody wants that guy. 
hundred percent. You couldn't say it better and more honestly. Yeah. Uh, you know, Teofimo Lopez, like you, 20, 22 year old undefeated yeah. kid. Uh, boy, uh, that's a potential one. Obviously, he's taking it. He's taking the shot at Lomachenko. Uh, yes, he is. If that fight happens, if it happens, I don't know. If it happens, I mean, it's supposed to happen, but you know, we we know about things that are supposed to happen sometimes. That's uh, behind true. the scenes, there could be stuff going on. But yeah, that's that's a heck of an interesting fight, and all those fights are out there for you. Now, you talked earlier about people chirping, you know, social media people out there talking and stuff. So I have to answer this question: What about Haney? <laughs> yeah, Haney, man. Uh, he's a guy I've known for a long time for the amateurs. Uh, I fought him many times and six times, right? Six, six, six right? yeah, six times. Um, he's we've all got our share of victories. But if you're looking at the the last two fights when we're at the appropriate age, you can consider a match in the amateurs. Uh, sure. We're one and one. You know, um, you know, I beat him at the Junior Olympics and he beat me at the Junior Worlds. So you know, we're tied up there. It, it was great fights, you know, but. If you ask anybody, when I beat him, I really beat him. Like <laughs> I cracked him, and you know he was, he was, you know, all over the place. But when he beat me, he 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 boxed his way to a close victory, which is only a three round fight. But he did do his thing, and you know, but th those are the type of opponents I see myself having. You know, those lantern fights because I know Devin Haney personally, and I know that he's he's a very determined fighter, just like me, and. I all respect him, but at that at, at that time, we're gonna see who pulls it out, and I can't wait for a fight like that. Uh, I think possibly after this one, I'm in line for him. You know, Luke Campbell. After this, I'll become the mandatory for for Devin Haney. So um, there it is. Uh, that could happen then, or you know, I also have an option to fight Javante Davis, which I really would love to fight Javante Davis, uh, and I think the fans would go crazy for. Uh, and that's a fight I'm looking into too. But there's, like you said, there's so many options. But uh, yeah, Devin Haney, a great fighter, and I would love to be in the ring. Javante, of course, the big puncher. People would would love to see that fight. Um, but he's got to get past Santa Cruz if that fight is is you know is happening. Uh, yeah, and that's going to be an interesting fight. Who do you like in that fight with Tank Davis and Santa Cruz? Santa Cruz throws a lot of punches. <laughs> he does. He does throw a lot of punches. Um, of course, you're looking at talent versus some guy that don't give up. You know what I mean? And uh, the thing I've always said with Tank, and I think a lot of piece, people say this, is Tank goes up a lot of pounds, you know, in between fights. And that is not good for you in a fight that might be a long fight. You know, a short fight, okay, you could get conditioned for maybe uh, one through five, six. But once it starts getting later and things aren't, like feeling the best way you start missing a little bit of punches it might I, as i'm saying like it might not go the way it thinks it's gonna go you know what i mean you think you're just gonna go in there and just maul over a guy but when it doesn't happen now what now you're gonna like ah oh, you feel the stress you feel the anxiety of the guy coming at you do you have enough in the tank to <laughs> that's a pun but do you have enough tank uh, a gas in the tank to push you forward to, to okay, you're trying to put the pressure on me? Nah, check this out. I'm going to counter that. I don't know if he does. Uh, I don't know if all that, you know, eating, drinking, or whatever he's doing, I don't know what he's doing in his personal life. I just see it, him, his body. Uh, yeah. I don't know sure. if he's ready for that. And I, I really hope he is because I want to fight him, just like he said about me. He wants me to beat Luke Campbell so we can fight. Well, I want you to beat Leo Santa Cruz. All the best for you, man. I want to get that fight on, too. And I think the world wants to see it too, so let's get it. You win your fight, I'll win mine. That's a promise. Very good. Well, the fans will definitely be there for that pay per view. That's one I'd love to see too. Yeah, that's that. I, I, people are sleeping on that. That is, you know, with both of our social media followings and with the hype, with the boxing. I mean, that's that's a huge fight. It is very very big fight. Well, listen, we want to be sensitive to your time, but before we let you go, um, one thing that we forgot to I forgot to ask you earlier when you were talking about your training now, what's like a typical day of training look for you right now during the quarantine? Uh, I get up early, uh, just pit my normal three to five miles in, uh, just a pretty good jog. I like to, you know, try to hit the, in a five-minute range, a five-mile range, uh, probably like a 
35 minutes, 37 minutes uh, run for five miles. And then after that, um, I take a shower, eat a little bit of breakfast, then go to training at around 11. And then it goes like 11 to 2 or 1.30. And then from there, you know, rest up. And then I go to strength and conditioning every other day from 6 to 8. And then just rest and then sparring every other day. But not right now, I'm not sparring. But um, when I am sparring, it's every other day. Sounds familiar. Sounds smart. Sounds right. And uh, last thing for me, and thanks for the time. It's been great talking to you. Um, who's your favorite fighter of all time? Mm, I got three fighters that came to my mind. It's Sugar Ray Robinson, Sugar Ray Leonard, Muhammad Ali. Those are my favorite three. But then you also have Pacquiao. So those four are my favorite fighters. I would have to say Sugar Ray Leonard, Sugar Ray Robinson, Manny Pacquiao, and Muhammad Ali. Just because they, they, I don't know, they, they not only did things inside the ring, they did them out, and they did a lot of beautiful things. So I think those are my favorite fighters of all time. Pretty good list. Not bad. Mm, yeah, not bad, Pretty man. Damn good. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ryan, thank you for your time. And um, you're, you're everything that I – so far that I believe that uh, I would hope you to be, which is a smart kid, a kid who's taken advantage of this opportunity that God's given you, that, you know, that you've given yourself and, and your family has given you. And uh, you're smart. Uh, you represent yourself outside the ring as well as you do inside the ring. I wish you nothing but luck. Thank you so much, Teddy. And I, I'm going to try to prove your words right. <laughs> Let's do it. All you right, guys. Got- You guys can find Ryan on King Ryan G on Instagram, right? Yes. You could even add me on TikTok. TikTok. I'm almost at 2 million followers now. Add me on there too at King Ryan Garcia. Trying to build that one up too. We're going to see you dancing on TikTok? Oh, no. I don't do dances, man. Come on, man. I I might do a few, but for fun. (laughs) All right. Well, listen, thank you for the time. Really appreciate it. Look forward to seeing you in action. Good luck with everything. Take care, Ryan. All right. Thank you, Rob. We'll see you. Thanks, guys.